G'day everyone, Jared here from Square One Physio. I'm lucky enough to have Michael Smith with me here this morning, a champion uh, at Northern Suburbs Rugby Union Club, former Premiership winning back rower, and uh, he's been kind enough to lend us his time this morning to run through a, a really mean session. Thanks for having me, man. No worries, it's a pleasure. This session is aimed as a metabolic conditioning session. So the idea here is that first and foremost, you work really hard. On top of that, we're actually trying to ensure that the exercises included within the programming itself reflect the needs of a rugby union forward. So, I mean, as a forward in rugby, you've got a, a couple of key jobs, you know, dominating the collision and making your tackles, getting over the ball to protect and or steal it, among a whole host of things. And what this essentially requires is that you're really strong in a couple of key areas, in particular, your shoulders. So now within your shoulders, you've got the rotator cuff musculature, as well as the muscles down here at the back, all of those uh, scapular stabilizing muscles, so the stuff between and around your shoulder blades. So we're gonna hone in on those a little bit more um, in your familiar gym program to ensure that these guys are fired up and working well. And I view this program as a really important program for that key set of people. Um, it's not to replace your strength and conditioning program, but more so to uh, be included, to be more refined, or you can roll this out alongside your current strength and conditioning program. So we're gonna dive straight into it. Right. Um, along the way, I'm gonna ask Smithy to comment on a couple of key things that are more around positioning, relevant to rugby. Um, so you'll see him chime in and, and offer some really good coaching gems around a couple of things like that. So hopefully there's a lot that you take away from this. Um, so let's just rip into that. Work hard. Cool. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is what we call a band YMCA. So I'll just switch this up the wall a little bit for him first. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get him with a strong base position, feet hip width apart. What he's going to do is bring the hands up to shoulder height, shoulder width apart. He's going to bring that into a row position or a face pull, externally rotate the shoulders, push to an overhead position, come back down and release. He's gonna do that for a total of eight repetitions. Key things to note here, he's really strong through his legs, he's strong through his trunk and the band is not moving him forward off that position. So he's strong to begin with through his trunk. What he's then doing is squeezing the shoulder blades back and together, externally rotating to recruit the rotator cuff musculature. This right here, abduction external rotation, is a primary dislocating position for the shoulder. So we want to put you into that position. We want to strengthen those muscles in that position to try and decrease the likelihood that you have any injury in that position. Moving back, he then goes into an overhead position. Okay, often in rugby, in that overhead position, you get a couple of, couple of bumps, whether you're reaching up high to assume that line out. So again, just making sure that some of the positioning as part of this exercise reflect some of the activities that you're gonna do in rugby. Anything there, Smithy, you wanted to comment on? Um, yeah, specifically for forwards. So um, you're know, being strong in this position here, especially for our jumping forwards is, is really quite crucial. Um, you want enough ball control and hand control for your delivery to your halfback um, and being able to take that ball confidently. Yeah, fantastic. And what you'll note here, even though Smith is a real unit, we've got a relatively lightweight by his standards. So the rotator cuff still musculature, tough. yeah, it's still tough, and that's where the repetition comes into it. But um, the rotator cuff musculature, compared to other muscle groups, are not designed as prime movers. They are designed to hold the head of the humerus or the upper arm of the arm bone here into the socket. So you're going to achieve that better by choosing a light to mild to moderate weight. Um, so keep that in mind. Next thing we're gonna do is do a band pull apart. So I'll get you to stand here facing that way, please, Smithy. Cool. And what we're gonna do is just shoulder width apart, holding that band. He's gonna squeeze the shoulder blades back and together, then pull with the arm until it hits him in the chest. So we're gonna do 20 here. So he's just gonna start ripping through those. That's two, three, four. I'll get you to keep counting for me there, Smithy. So what we're gonna do is really build a strong base or a platform for the shoulder girdle itself by ensuring that you get appropriate strengthening between your shoulder blades and the scap scapula stabilizers. These muscles here, they essentially form the base for the shoulder girdle. So what we want to do as part of this particular superset, going from the YMCA's 
into the band pull apart is focus on the cuff, then bring it back around into your shoulder stabilizers and your scapular musculature, as well as just getting some work into you, warm you up nice and well before we dive into some heavy stuff. Again. What should happen? That's not enough. Siri, where are you at then? <laughs> Go ahead. Two more. Two more. So that one should be uh, more familiar to a few of you, um, I guess less rugby specific, but again super super important. This one again, turning our heads to a really important exercise, but integrating a bit more of that familiar rugby positioning, we're going to go into a banded bear crawl. So you're going to see Smitty assume a really strong base position through his arms and through his legs at this point. He's got the band there around his uh, wrists. He's spread the floor and he's got firm contact with the ground. From here, he's gonna start crawling down towards his right as far as the rim allows him. But when you roll out the session by yourself, I want you to go for 10 repetitions to your right and then 10 repetitions to your left. So I'm gonna get him to go as far as he can here and he's gonna return all the way back toward me. A couple of key things is, aside from the strong base position through his legs, through his hips and through his shoulders, you see that he's really switched on through his trunk, okay? So you want to have that really good, strong trunk position, engagement of that core, because how often do you find yourself in a similar position over the ball in rugby, with a bunch of guys trying to come in and just take you out of the game? Um, as it relates to rugby specifically, I'll yeah. throw to you, Smithy, what do we want to be looking to do, achieve, how should we look with that one? Definitely, it's, uh, we like to call this our power position. So that position is, especially in scrummaging, quite important uh, because it's your strongest position uh, and it's the position where you can offer the most power and effort to a scrum, as well as the most stability. The key thing, I think, for uh, specifics around the movement are small steps. So big steps increase, uh, decrease stability. So small steps, small movements while keeping everything engaged um, and making sure that those movements are effective and precise rather than sloppy and fast. Great, perfect. All right, so we're gonna superset this. You'll find that all of these exercises are gonna go from one movement straight into another. Once Smithy and I have covered off on the detail around it, we're gonna run through it again in a streamlined fashion so that you can follow along at home and just bang it out. So let's go into the next one. This one here is what we call a sideline kettlebell corkscrew. So this one here, Smitty's gonna go into a sideline plank. Great, all right. And then once he's up in that plank position, start up here, you'll see that he's got the kettlebell and he's inverted that kettlebell, so turned it upside down, and he's rotating with his hand and his shoulder. And you can see there's actually a bit of play, there's a bit of movement there in that kettlebell position. And if it's not moving in this way, the weight's probably too light. You wanna see that wobble because in fact, you're trying to re recruit your rotator cuff as well as your wider shoulder stabilizers to control that movement. And that's where the art is uh, in this particular exercise. And that's in the upper arm. So moving on from the up arm, You've also got the down arm, so really strong position through that down shoulder. Um, and then beyond that, you can see he's a lovely straight line from his shoulders down to his ankles. So we're actually starting to engage the wider body. Again, this whole idea of trunk control, glutes are strong all the way down through his thighs. And you can see here, that's no easy task. That exercise uh, is pretty difficult. So being pretty selective with your weight to make sure that yes, it's hard, to control, but you can certainly maintain a decent level of control throughout the remainder of your body while completing that exercise, all super, super important, okay? Um, let's move on from that, and we're just gonna go straight into the next superset. This one here, again, is aimed at rotator cuff, so stabilization of the shoulder, okay? Dislocation in shoulder instability itself is one of the most common injuries I see as a physio in our sport. So you'll find that I keep referring back to these key muscle groups and I've included some exercises really aimed at trying to prime these and improve them further. We're gonna go into an inverted kettlebell Arnold press. So I'll get Smitty to demonstrate that one. Perfect. So he's coming out to the side and pushing into an overhead position. 
Okay, and what you'll notice here that he's doing beautifully is he's not allowing the shoulder or the elbow to fall out of sync. The elbow never drops below the level of the shoulder. He does have the position of the kettlebell inverted again, so that adds that inherent instability, which is again really important. And then for the last few reps, I'll get him to turn towards the camera just so you can see a slightly different view. Strong base position, trunk is on, inverted kettlebell, and it's looking really, really good. Once he's completed the repetitions on that one, he's gonna swap shoulders. And then he's going to, no, that's fine. He's gonna swap shoulders in real time and complete that as he's demonstrating right now. You might actually find as well that there's a discrepancy in strength from one side to the other. So be mindful of that when selecting your weight. If you feel that there is, then um, select the weight that's best suited to you on that shoulder or that side. But you're going to superset that with just a conventional inverted kettlebell overhead press. Okay, now made this quite challenging for shitters here this morning. I've given him two different weights. That again just adds that inherent instability. It challenges the shoulder more so. That inherent instability is a great stimulus to try and ensure that the rotator cuff fires off to center that humeral head into the socket. And also, this is all firing off that shoulder blade musculature to form the, the really good solid base of the shoulder. That one is really tough, especially if there's uh, a difference in weight. Yep. And it really makes you think about the different aspects of stability in there, not just your shoulder and yep. being lazy with the, the rest of your hips or your core. So. Yeah, yeah, so really important point there. If you're sloppy through here as a part of that movement, then you're gonna really struggle through here. Even as far as the legs, if you really don't have a great strong base position down here, then this is gonna struggle. The flow and effects up the chain are gonna be um, noticeable when you get to that overhead position using those kettlebells. Okay, so um, that one should really start to get the juices flowing and the blood flowing. The next one of all is the most rugby specific. Um, I'm gonna to throw to Smitty a couple of times on this one with a couple of variations that may suit, say, front rowers versus back rowers, just in terms of probably body positioning and foot positioning. But the general theme is we're assuming um, a strong overball position or a strong scrum-like position, okay? So just being as specific with our movement pattern as we can. And then on top of that, we're then just gonna throw in a conventional row. So I'm gonna get the dumbbell here. Sure. I'll, I'll uh, jump in there just before I probably get fatigued and yeah, just struggle to talk a little bit. Uh, this is a really good one, especially in our rugby setup. So our front rowers know how to get through their individual setup. Um, and on the field or, or on a scrum or on a scrum machine, you're gonna have someone to bind onto. Using this band as a bit of a resistance is gonna be able to offer you the same type of stability as well as the same adjustment capability uh, around your positioning and your weight distribution as well as you go through this next exercise. It's really, really crucial for uh, working on as an individual. And this is something you can do in your scrum primers as well. Um, you can get one of these bands and attach it to another player or another object um, and, and get power and get fatigue in this position here. Um, How many times a game do you scrum under fatigue? So, you know, your first couple of scrums, you're a little more fresh, but you know, towards the back end of that first half and certainly in the second half as fatigue creeps in, you wanna make sure that not only are you strong in this position, but you've got the endurance to stay there and, and be competitive in that task. So the more that you practice this and expose yourself to this repetitively over time, the better able you'll be able to compete to win uh, doing these key tasks. This is also gonna be able to offer you some stability over the ball um, if you're, you're attacking a ruck as well, so. So he's just gonna dive into it. So there's, two, there's a couple of different positions. I guess uh, if you're a front rower, you might start with a, uh, a staggered start uh, and, and then move into your foot back. As a lock, you might Start to move your foot all the way back. Start like this. Right. And you're going to need to position yourself really far forward so that the band tension largely keeps you in a pretty good position um, so that you don't just stack it. You can keep a, a higher hip position than perhaps you would in a scrum just to stay upright. But bear in mind that you know we often cue you to sink lower. But from an exercise perspective, you can see right away that he is required to stay super strong through his toes, all the way through his wider leg. His hip position is really, really strong. Again, his trunk is on, 
and then he's in a bind position through the left arm on this one and he's just moving through a conventional row on the other side. So setting that shoulder blade back and then pulling with his arm to his side all the while having to just maintain that rugby specific positioning. Same thing here, he switched it on over, it's going to work through the reps on the left side with the row, but you can see nothing else has changed. What you can see though is he's having to change his position or his body weight distribution as he goes. And in reality, in rugby, in the context of scrum or ruck specific work, you do need to adjust your body position to account for the various different things that occur through those activities. So a really good exercise for us, um, blending what we know to be a conventional movement at row into a really rugby specific one. And Smithy beautifully explained perhaps how you can vary the setup to account for your position within the eight. Um, and anything else you want to comment on there? Or does that cover most things? No, it covers most things. It's really good for that scrum conditioning, um, especially uh, if you're doing it by yourself. You're working really hard there. You can feel it through your toes. I'm not a front rower or a scrummager anymore, but you can really feel it through your feet and your toes. And that's something that people won't really, especially as a scrummager, you know is really important, but you won't really be working on now, yeah. especially if you're uh, in isolation. Yeah, yeah, great. So we can just work on those more refined qualities. Now what he's gonna do is he's gonna assume that position. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into that position. And I'm gonna ask Smitty to hold that Okay, so this is working on that endurance phase. What he's then gonna do is come into that bind position and he's gonna go into what we call a W. Okay, so he's gonna try and squeeze his elbows back and down, trying to basically put his elbows in his pockets. And he's just gonna do six of those for us. You will have to play around with your position. Do you want feet today. flat or? Uh, go flat just for this one, yeah. And then he's gonna bring his elbows high and then it's just gonna put elbows in pockets, that's one. The key thing with this one is it's working your middle and lower trapezius, so these muscles between your shoulder blades but a little bit lower, which are really, really important when they form a strong base for the shoulder itself, as well as other key muscles like your rhomboids and various different things. But um, it looks easy, I can tell you right now, it's not when done with control. And should you find it too easy, you can just add dumbbells into those hands but the movement itself doesn't change. What are you looking for right at the, at the base whilst elbows in pockets? What are you, are you looking for a squeeze, a hold, a pulse? Yeah, exactly. You want to basically bring those elbows, the cue is put them in pockets and hold for two. So it's coming down, elbows in pockets, one, two, release. Okay, that hold just makes sure that we really emphasize and milk that repetition to ensure that we're targeting the key guys and holding them for long enough to really get a good contraction out of them because these muscles in that area, so what I'm talking about primarily is not our upper traps, but more so this middle and lower area. In most people, whether you play footy or not, they're a very underactive muscle group. So we want to be uh, targeting those guys right there. Okay, and as I palpate that area, I can feel that here in Smitty, they're working, okay. So that's a lovely exercise, uh, especially for our, our, our one to eight guys. We're then gonna move into the TRX progressions. So okay. this one is a TRX. Um, if you don't have one at home, get creative, use some rope, um, you know, whatever you feel you really can. You can see here, he's just getting into an overhead position. Now what he's gonna do, he's gonna take one arm out to a side, one arm forward. And then he's gonna, yeah, beauty. All right, now I'm gonna get a bit mean to him. All right, I want to expose some perturbation, basically give him a bit of a whack while he's doing that, just to unsettle the shoulder, just to unsettle him a little bit, because again, in our sport, you put your, play, you put your body and you put your shoulder in certain positions, on top of that, you're then gonna pop bump. So we're just gonna give him a bit of a... Good, and he's having to control it. All right, you can have a bit of fun with it if you're working with your teammates. Obviously within reason, because it is a tough exercise in and of itself. One more each way. Good man, last one. Perfect. So that's what we call an alternating TRX fallout. You can do that by itself, but if you're really looking to get uh, confident, and if you're looking to get control in your shoulders in what are typically vulnerable positions, 
and add in some bumps that you know you know are coming then you can train that in this way and uh, as you can see he's breathing pretty heavy so you know that you're working pretty hard then you're going to move into a renegade row so what Smithy's going to do here is assume a long plank position he's going to be strong through his shoulders and his hands he's going to be strong through his trunk tight through his legs and he's going to move and transition his weight to one side and row with the other he's going to do a total of 12 here Four. Beautiful base position. You can see he's tight and strong through his thighs, glutes are on, trunk is strong. He's transitioning that weight across beautifully and holding that while he moves into that row on the other side. Once he's done 12, that's him done. Beautiful. All right, so we slowed that down the first time around to really touch on a couple of key tech points. So a couple of things that I want you to focus on from a technique standpoint, and then also really important that from a coaching standpoint and a player standpoint, we, I guess, address the relevance of these towards rugby um, across a couple of key activities that you're going to do and you want to do them well and you need to be better at them. This is always room to improve. Grab a, grab a uh, drink at this point if you need to. Um, but what Smithy and I are gonna do is we're just gonna dive straight in. We're gonna work through this uh, exercise program from top to bottom and, and just uh, follow along at home and try and keep up. How you feeling? Good. Yeah. Mate, it's definitely uh, a bit fatiguing. Yeah, you can see that compared to say 190 kilo deadlifts and heavy bench and heavy squat, it's a lot lighter weight selection, but you're working no less hard. You're working muscle groups that don't have the capacity to lift as heavy as that, but by selecting appropriate weight or band tensions relevant to these muscle groups, you, you're again exhausting yourself equally. You've got beautiful technique. Always. Yeah, a good base pull row, external rotation, recruiting that rotator cuff, rotator cuff musculature. Ten of these? Ten of these. Moving into the abduction external rotation position, we need to be strong here. This is a position of vulnerability. And then driving into that overhead position, returning to that, and then again to the start. Beautiful. Band pull apart. We're gonna get the yellow band. So for this one, you'll need to go slightly higher. I'll get him standing here, facing that way, beauty. Shoulder width apart. Squeezing the shoulder blades back and together, then ripping the arms through until it hits him in the chest. This is an absolute banger. We do find that um, a lot of people are really, really strong through a lot of our pressing movements. So making sure that we've got some strength and some endurance and some control in your, in your, your pull movements is really, really important. And one that often we overlook. So he's gonna bang out 20 on this particular exercise for us. Getting a bit of a sweat up there. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Lovely. All right, banded bear crawls. So he's gonna start over here. We're gonna to aim to get 10 steps up and back as part of the superset. So ensure that you have enough room. A couple of key points that Smitty spoke about is controlled smaller steps, all right? So no sloppy large steps. And then from my point of view, making sure that you've got a great strong base position through your arms, your shoulders, you spread the floor with that band. And you can see here, he's got a good strong position through his toes and his feet. And then lastly, that trunk position, lovely flat back or neutral spine, really, really important. The band helps to fire off the rotator cuff as well as engage those scapular stabilizing muscles. And again, that really good rugby position. Side lying plank with an overhead kettlebell pull screw. What sort of rep range are we looking for here? Let's go for eight to ten. Okay. It's a lot harder than it looks. I mean, I know that it is hard. Once you get a crack at it, you'll feel the same thing. There's a lot going on. Stabilizing through your down arm, controlling that inverted kettlebell through range as you rotate your head and shoulder and then making sure that you don't get too sloppy through the rest of the body. So it actually requires a lot of neuromuscular coordination. 
You're connecting a lot of dots here, okay? Good man. Nothing too much to comment on there. He's looking really, really sharp. And it's just now about working hard and getting through the reps. All right. Take a short breather there if you need to. So as with all exercise, we don't want to sacrifice technique in any way. So now that you're moving through a second time, you're going to start getting fatigued, no doubt. If you start to feel yourself slipping on that technique, then just slow it down a little bit. Um, as I said at the start, some of these exercises, most of them, if not all, are more refined. So you're going to have to concentrate a little more than those familiar movements to you. So slow it down, get it right, so that you get the right muscles working in the right ways at the right joints. We're going to go for the Arnold press first. We're going to do eight on each side. Were you planning on working out today? Oh, mate. Probably won't need to anymore. Probably won't need to. Might go for a little jog. <laughs> Good man. But you can really feel the uh, the effects of this, even though it's lightweight and you're, you're probably not getting that muscle building, that yeah. stabilization, and the muscular endurance that you get from this is great. Really good stuff. He's going to switch straight over, he's going to do the other side. You're going to be really working here, and I can see that he is. That kettlebell is going to start shifting around on you, so you're going to have to really focus on recruiting those muscles to hold it strong, stabilize the inverted kettlebell. And again, it's in what we typically accept as a really vulnerable position for the shoulder. So you want to be working in that range and making sure that you feel comfortable there. And then, just to top it off, I'm going to make him go straight into an unbalanced overhead press with the inverted kettlebells themselves. So, look, you may not always have access to two different kettlebells, um, and just six of these, mate. But it makes it a little more challenging, which is really, really cool. And uh, again, I can hear it and I can see it. He's working really hard here. Good man. All right, all good? Great. All right, now we're gonna go into that bind position. Beautiful. So this is his bread and butter. Oh man, I don't know about that. As a back, going back a while, this one perhaps was a little bit less relevant to me as it relates to scrum, but you know, if you're in the middle of the field competing for the ball, you do need to be strong in this position. So even for your backs, um, this one can, can be really important. Definitely, this is, um really good for, for clean outs and position over the ball when you're trying to attack a, uh, a defensive breakdown. Um, especially when you're cleaning out, you really want to be taking that plane off um, and powerful in this position here. All right. It takes a bit of work and adjusting first up to get your body position. But again, that's all part of the challenge of this exercise. Oh. How many? We're going to do eight on each side then, mate. Toes are strong, oh. they're going to need to be. Base position through his legs and along to his hips is going to be really strong. Again, you're going to be a little bit more fatigued, so really bunker down and, and lock it all in. Trunk and back, strong, bind position up, and then carry out that row. Once you've done the eight reps, switch it on over to the left. Work really hard to hold that position. You can see he's adjusting on the fly as he needs to. and he's ripping through that row for a total of eight repetitions. And sweating it up. Works Absolutely. Really well. All right, now again, as with all exercises contained within this program, it's a superset. So once he catches his breath, we're gonna come into that same position and rather than move through a row, we're gonna go into a W. So he's gonna come into like a bilateral bind position with his arms held over his head, elbows bent at 90 degrees. What he's then gonna do is rip those elbows and put them in his pockets. Once he brings those back, he's gonna hold for two and really squeeze that to milk contraction. And what we're doing here is working those middle and lower trapezius and those rhomboid muscles. So again, all that stuff between the shoulder blades and a little bit lower, that form the base of our shoulder, which affords us great stability. All the while assuming a really functional position relevant to rugby. Not only our forwards, but our backs too. 
How hard work in there, Smithy? Oh, good. Second time round. Yeah. Feel burn. Yeah. Another bonus of this particular exercise regime is, I mean, we've only got a couple of key things working at the moment: some power bands, some kettlebells, and some dumbbells, and largely using really light weight. So, um, you know, being creative with what you actually can use means that you still can get through this program uh, without too much and, and do it at home and at training. Then we're going to go into the TRX. Okay. So we're going to get him into a position of vulnerability. We're asking him to control his shoulders and hands in an overhead position. We're going to take one arm out to the side and one arm directly over our heads. He's going to do a couple of reps without me. And then I'm going to come in and offer those perturbations. All right. So coming in now, we're just putting some, some differing pressure through him. Trying to challenge him and the shoulders to hold their position. And if you have a history of instability in the shoulder, confidence or a lack of apprehension is really, really important. So making sure that we challenge the shoulders in this way is really important. Even if you don't have a history of instability, again, a really important exercise for you to get through. How many are we up there? 10? Yeah. 10. And then to finish off, we're going to go into that renegade row. Three. All right. You can see here, Strong base position for his feet. Really, really tight and long through the posterior aspect of his thighs into his calves. Trunk, as with all exercises, strong throwing that belly button in and making sure that that core area is really tight. Shifting his weight to one side, strong through the shoulder, pushing the ground away while the other arm is moving through the road movement. There's a lot happening here and he's already pretty fatigued. We're gonna go for an eight to 10. And then that's our, that's our movement. Sweet. Just take a look at him. You can see he's worked pretty hard throughout that program. Definitely. Um, so we want you to follow along at home. You'll see through the video exactly what we want you to focus on. There's a couple of key things from a physiotherapy standpoint relating to technique that we want you to attend to. And then also we've been lucky enough to have Smithy along today to, I guess, relate the exercises to, to rugby itself with a couple of uh, key gems around coaching some of those movements. Um, so again, I'd like to thank him for joining us today. Really, really cool to have him along. Thanks, mate. And um, hopefully yeah, you got a good workout nice and early today. Definitely. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thank you.